Ron Butler is back. We're going to talk mortgages starting right now. This is Debt Free in 30. Here's your host, Doug Hoyes. Ron Butler, the founder of Butler Mortgage, is back on the podcast. Ron, this is your fifth appearance here on Debt Free in 30 since your first appearance three years ago, just as the pandemic was starting. You remember the pandemic? Those were, those were good times, eh? Um, now, you're a difficult guest because you never really say what's on your mind. I've always got to probe and, you know, can you tell me what's really on your mind? So I, I want you to try your best to, to not, you know, filter your comments so much and actually say what's on your mind. Can you, can you do that for me today, Ron? Oh, you should. You mean I should abandon my normal shrinking violet? Exactly. Approach. That's exactly right. what I'm saying. No more shrinking violet stuff. That's that's right. what we want. Right. So, okay, March first, 2022, less than a year ago, the Bank of Canada prime rate, according to my research, was 25 basis points. Okay, that's one quarter, one yeah. percent. Your research is dead on. There you go. So virtually nothing. Then March second, 2022, Bank of Canada raised by 25 basis points, meaning they doubled the interest rate. That's what that means. And they've kept on raising them since eight times in total in the last 11 months. And now here we are, beginning of February, the Bank of Canada target overnight rate is 4.5%. Okay. Now the listener may say, wow, going from 0.25 to 4.5, that's an increase of 4.25. That's a lot. But it's actually worse than that because going from 25 basis points to 450 basis points, that's an 18 times increase. Correct. I did the math on a calculator, so I know that's accurate. Now, I know if if minimum wage went up 18 times from 15 bucks, it'd be going to $270 an hour. That didn't happen. So my first question for you, what are you seeing? What's happening with mortgages? Obviously, mortgage rates are way higher than they were 11 months ago. What does that mean? Does it mean no one's getting a mortgage? Are you busy? Are you not busy? What What's happening? Is everyone going variable? Is everyone going fixed? I mean, a whole bunch of questions. Just just start wherever you want to tell me what's happening. Well, probably the most important and meaningful thing to say for consumers is that there's a whole ton of people paying a lot more on their mortgage and they don't like it. So it's funny that the first reaction we get when uh, variable rate hits their trigger point. So I'll just do a quick recap of trigger point. There's a number of uh, banks who don't change the payment when the rate goes up on a variable rate mortgage. Uh, but eventually the interest grows so great that we have experience now that they have to change the payment because if they didn't increase the payment, the mortgage would actually grow. So that, that's, I won't get too far in the weeds on that one, but it's the experience that virtually everyone is going through now is that the people who had to make a, a higher payments every time the bank raised, they're crying. But in the last several months, these people uh, with the banks who typically did not raise the payment are finding that they're crying too, that their payments have gone up. And you're talking about variable rate mortgages. Correct. And so when it first happened and the Bank of Canada went from 0.25 to 0.5, variable rates back a year ago were how much? Do you have any remember? Can you remember back a year? Well, it, it's always it's always about more or less 1.25 higher than the um, Bank of Canada rate. So, so if the Bank of Canada is 0.25, the variable rate was somewhere between 1.15 and 1.5. Gotcha. So 1.5%. And right. so when the Bank of Canada raised, okay, maybe my rate went from 1.5% to 1.75%. That's in percentage terms, a big number, but you know, probably not fatal for a whole lot of people. But now a variable rate, we're looking at like, you know, 6% or close to it. Correct. So it's somewhere between 57 and 6%. Yes. And even though I have a variable rate mortgage, I can have an a term of three years, five years, something like that. Is that correct? Correct. And I can have an amortization period of 25 years. Correct. Okay. Or 30 or, or th 30 years. You can go 30 years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I totally get it then if I've got a variable rate mortgage and it went from one and a half percent to 6%, right. that means my monthly payment um, has more than doubled. Is that what that means? I guess it depends on my it's amortization. About, it's period. between 45 and 55% increase. 45 to 55% increase. So if I was paying $2,000 a month, I could easily be paying $3,000 a month now. 100% right. Okay. That sounds pretty bad to me. 
Like from it's bad. <laughs> it's really bad. Yeah, it's bad. Now imagine you had a home equity line of credit, and your home equity line of credit used to be two point nine five percent in March of twenty twenty two, and now it's over. It's almost seven. It's a little over. It's almost seven percent. So that payment's actually up more than a hundred percent. So if you were paying a thousand dollars a month in your line of credit, you're now up to twenty two fifty or something. So yeah, this is all. All bad news. There's no good news anywhere. It's all bad. And is it typical for a HELOC, a home equity line of credit, to have interest-only payments? Yes, that is exactly the way it's designed. It's designed to have a, a payment that is the minimum amount of interest per month to support to, you have to pay the minimum amount of interest per month. So the minimum amount of interest has gone up more than double. So, and I, I guess this is the, the distinction here. And of course, all our listeners are going, yeah, we understand how amortization works, but just for that one person who doesn't. So when I'm paying a mortgage, it's amortized over 25 years. That means every month I am paying both principal and interest. So yeah. when when the interest rate goes up, if my payment also go up, well, I'm still also paying principal. So it's, it doesn't it doesn't double. But when I'm paying a HELOC, all I'm paying is interest. So if the interest rate goes from 3% yep. to 6%, my payment is doubling. So that's why your variable rate mortgage payment might have gone up 50%, but your HELOC payment could have gone up more than 100%. 100% I've correct. Nailed it. I've nailed, nailed it. I've nailed it. nailed all the principles. Fantastic. Sir, yes. I'm going to apply for a job working at Butler Mortgage, and, you, and I can explain this to everybody. Okay, so there is no good news here. Everything is up, 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 up. Are you seeing... Fewer people getting mortgages, more people get like what's happening in in your business. Well, if we look at the months of um, October, November, and December in the mortgage business in Ontario and British Columbia, um, mortgage activity was down fifty percent in both of those provinces. So that's half half is big. Mm -hmm. Half is really big. I mean, that is big. big. That is big. I yeah. agree. So okay, that's th that's a lot then. Um, and obviously we can understand why the interest rates are a lot higher. So presumably there's a lot fewer people buying houses too and flipping houses and sure. all that. Well, in those two provinces, Alberta, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Ontario and British Columbia, uh, similarly in those three months, um, purchase activity of houses was down nearly 50% for all mm -hmm. three of those months. And when we say 50%, you might say, oh, well, 2020, you know, one was a huge, huge month. Uh, sorry, a huge year. It was a super busy year. It was a record year in house sales in Canada. Uh, but when we start talking about October, November, and December 2022, those were 10-year lows, in some cases 20-year lows in those provinces. So, you know, we're talking really historic lack of purchase house purchase activity. And which is why there's fewer people wanting mortgages too. Great. Okay, now here's something else I want you to explain to me because I'm a smart guy, as you know, but sometimes I don't always get it. So I went to butlermortgage.ca. You've probably heard of that website. And yep. I clicked on the rates button and the rates, I assume, are do you change them daily or whatever? So they'll probably be yeah. Yeah. probably be different depending on when the viewer is is checking the rates that, that we're talking about. So in a normal world, this is what I don't understand. In a normal world, if I'm an investor, the longer I lock my money up for, the more I want to get paid. So if you come to me and say, hey, Doug, I want to borrow 20 bucks. I'll pay you back tomorrow. I'll say, yeah, sure. Here you go. Here's the 20 bucks. Pay me back tomorrow. But if you say, hey, Doug, I want to borrow a thousand bucks and I'll pay you back in six months, I'm going to say, okay, well, I need you to, I'm going to charge you a bit of interest on that. And if you say you're going to pay me back in a year or five years, I want a higher interest rate to compensate me for the risk that I'm going to have to take while I wait for you to pay me back. So my my own personal six-month rate when I lend to you might be 5%, but if it's going to be over a year, I want 8%. And if it's over five years, I want 12%. And, you know, and that's obviously a per, uh, an annual interest rate. And typically, I would think that's how mortgages work as well. The longer the term, the higher the interest rate. But today, the yield that investor that lenders want is upside down. So it's inverted. We hear this in the news all the time, the inverted yield curve. We have an inverted yield curve. So Butler Mortgage will give me, I haven't actually applied to you, but let's assume that I could get the rates posted on your, your website, will give me a five-year fixed rate of 4.28%. But if I want a six-month fixed rate, you're going to charge me 6.08%. That's an yeah. inversion of 180 basis points, 1.8%. Big, big. So why is it that short-term rates are so much higher than long-term rates 
here early in 2023? It's actually it's actually relatively easy to explain, even though it, you're right. It's rare. It's unusual. And inver- inverted yield curves don't happen very often, but it's relatively simple to explain. So if you're borrowing money for six months, you're basically a slave to the Bank of Canada. The Bank of Canada has a very high uh, prime compared with the last 15 years, and prime rate is 6.7. So you got to pay for six month mortgage. You got to pay something that's in the ballpark of that high rate. Uh, it's, just, it's just reasonable. I mean, that's that's the rate that exists for borrowing. Uh, prime rate six point seven. That's the rate. Now, when we look forward five years, though, that's based on estimates of where interest rates are going to be over the course of that five years. Now, it, it doesn't make any sense unless you you say, well, we're going to. We're paying a lot this year, and then is it going to go down? Is in fact, is it is interest going to be much less five years from now? Because over the course of that five years, the idea is to average out where interest will be. So the the experts who cut these rates are saying, you know what? We're absolutely sure that interest rates and the prime rate from the Bank of Canada will be less over the course of this five years, but maybe in six months. Maybe not in a year, maybe not even in 18 months, but eventually the Bank of Canada will cut these prime rates. It will come down and our five-year offer is going to reflect our certainty, our belief that it will come down in five years. So that's where those rates come from. And that is also my personal view because on our year-end podcast, I predicted that inflation would be lower at the end of the year than it is at the start of the year. Now, of course, I mm-hmm. predicted the same thing last year and I was totally wrong. So nobody's following my predictions, I hope. But I'm of the view that we're probably already in a recession. I think it probably started like, I don't know, in October or something. And recessions tend to depress everything, including prices, and fewer people are borrowing, and that eventually drives interest rates down. So it would not shock me at all if in the future interest rates were lower than they are today. I don't mean tomorrow, but six months, a year, two years, three years. Do you, and I know you're smart, you don't make predictions like me, but do you it's think a it's- a terrible business. It's right. a terrible business making predictions. Exactly. Do you think it is reasonable, though, that you know in the future, interest rates will be- potentially lower than they are now? Well, if inflation does come down, if in, then the there's no longer any need for the inflation's 2%. There's no need for the Bank of Canada to be at 4.5. That's just like night follows day. That's true. So that's the bet we're all making. We're all making that bet, whether you're a bank, whether you're a bond trader, whether you're the uh, the governor of the Bank of Canada, we're all essentially believing because the Bank of Canada has announced they are no longer increasing prime rate, that they've said they're going to pause and observe. doesn't mean they're never going to do it, but they have removed the immediate certainty that it's going to go up again in March. They have, they've made that clear. They've been out, effectively announced it. They're going to watch it. They're going to watch inflation. If it starts to accelerate again, they're going to, in all likelihood, raise rates. But for the time being, they are paused and observing. And their belief is that inflation will decline. So if that is actually what happens, and inflation goes back to 2%, there is no need for a 4.5% Bank of Canada prime rate, or same in the United States. There's no reason to have a very high Federal Reserve rate in the United States either. So that's the concept that it will come down and inflation will will reduce and we will eventually see rates come down. There might be a long lag. It might be a year from now before we see the first decrease, but that is the concept behind it all. Yeah. And of course we can debate whether the Bank of Canada knows what they're doing. Um, And my opinion would be they do not, but don't audit me if you're the Bank of Canada because uh, you know, they're looking at things like unemployment and it still looks really low. Well, yeah, it's a lagging indicator. It takes like a year for that to catch up to what's going on in the economy. So I suspect they should have stopped raising rates six months ago. But hey, that's just me. We're not going to we won't get into that discussion because what do any of us know? OK, so everything you said, I totally agree with. Practically, what does that mean? I'm coming to you for a mortgage and should I be going variable? Should I be going locked in two years, three years, five years? Like what, what should I be doing? How would you advise me as a mortgage professional? Well, the first thing I would tell you is you do not want a variable rate. It is completely crazy 
to take a rate that is higher than short-term or even long-term fixed rates today, to take a rate that is higher than fixed rates today, making a bet, oh, I, I think it's going to come way down real fast, and then I'm going to be way ahead. Well, that's just nuts. It makes no sense. If you, you're, you've are you got a mortgage, you've got bills to pay, you're, you're not a bond trader, you're not a uh, you're, you're not a speculator. It, it just doesn't make sense to take on a rate that is actually higher than the two-year fix you could get your hands on or the three-year fix you could get your hands on, to take a higher rate betting, like betting that it's going to come way down way fast. And at the end of two years or three years, you're going to be ahead. That's just nuts. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to take on a risk because there is a risk. There is a risk that that mainland China invades Taiwan and, and rates go up again, that that there's some kind of huge leap in energy costs and prime rate can go up again. Remember, the Bank of Canada didn't say no more increases, guaranteed reduction. They said we're going to pause and observe. So it makes no sense to take on the risk from the bank when in, and for a higher rate than getting a fixed rate mortgage where the bank takes the risk. The yeah. bank takes the risk on where the rates are going to go. Yeah, and that's, the key, two years. and that's the key point. And so when I quoted those numbers, five-year fixed of 4.28%, six-month fixed uh, 6.08%, obviously I'm not comparing the same term there. But if I was to, let's say I want a, I want to lock in for three years, the rough difference between a three-year variable and a three-year fixed is what now? 100 basis points? 150 basis points? 125. 125 basis points. So now if you and I were having this discussion five years ago, I would have said, well, Ron, the variable rate is less than the fixed rate. So it's not a bad risk to be taking the variable rate. Is that correct? Well, that, is the, that is the big key. The variable rate has to be demonstratively less than any fixed rate before anyone would consider a variable rate. We, as a rule of thumb, we use between one and one and a quarter percent. The variable rate should be one percent or one and a quarter percent less than a fixed rate for it to be in any way, shape, or form attractive. Now, we're also coming off a period of time since 2008 where these variable rates have been virtually suppressed, the, the interest rate has been suppressed for almost 15 years. So it's only just taken off in the last 10 months. I mean, there, there was all kinds of years uh, where it was extremely low, right? Even right 2014, 2015, prime rate was very low in comparison with its normal uh, positioning in the Canadian economy. So for nearly 15 years, variable was a great bet. A fantastic bet. It, it it served everybody. Everybody consistently paid off more of their mortgage, had a lower payment. It was terrific for the consumer. But there's a moment in time when a reckoning occurs. We've gone through it, and variable no longer makes any sense to take on today. If you're looking at a new mortgage today, it makes no sense. But you know, human beings are often trapped by recency bias. So if you've experienced great results from your variable rate right up till now, uh, and just the last year it went bad, but for the previous 10 years it was great, you might think, oh no, this is just this is just a blip and I should just hang on to variable because it's what I'm used to. It's what I remember performed well. Well, you just really have to stop and pay attention to the math. Makes no sense to take a variable right now of any type. It makes sense to get a short-term fixed rate mortgage. So if I'm a 30-year-old, I don't know if that's a millennial or not, but let's assume it is, and I'm talking to my parent who is as old as me, and my parent says, well, you know, we always had a variable rate, and for the last 15 years it was fantastic, my response should be, doesn't matter, the world has changed. It doesn't matter. At this moment in time, it makes no sense. You know, if you're any sort of a trader, a uh, professional trader, and somebody came to you and said, hey, I think we should pay extra to take on more risk. They would tell you, you're nuts. You're supposed to get a discount for taking on risk. You're not supposed to pay a premium. So yeah, and the that's, professional would tell you you're crazy. Right. And the, and the key difference is 
10 years ago, 15 years ago, five years ago, the variable rate was lower than the fixed rate. So yeah, you got a discount for taking on risk. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, this makes perfect sense then, because if, if I'm paying 100 basis points less or 125 basis points less on the variable to the fixed, even if interest rates go up 100 basis points, I'm still better off than if I'd locked in. Makes perfect still better sense. Off. Still better off. But yeah. now it's the exact opposite. I am paying an extra 125 basis points so that I can take even more risk. So if interest rates go up, I'm even worse off. Like it's just, it's just totally crazy. So, okay. So this. Well, no, you got to remember there's a bunch of people, there's a bunch of mortgage brokers who say, no, 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 we're smarter than everyone else. And we've determined that this is the exact moment in time that the rates are going to start to come off. I mean, you know, we'll show you on a graph how we think it's going to go for the next three years and you're going to end off better. Um, I say to those mortgage brokers, you're crazy. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's literally nuts. It doesn't, and just to show off and pretend you think you've got some kind of incredible ability to prognosticate a market and try to make a, a bet that seems like you're knowledgeable, no, to hell with that. You should just treat the consumer in a very conservative way and say it makes no sense to pay extra for even a small risk of the rate going up. Perfect. That's what I wanted you to say. Something that, you know, where you actually told me what you think, what you just did. And that, that last 45 seconds, I'm going to make that the trailer for your new podcast. That'd be perfect. Uh, my new infinitely never to yes. appear podcast. I yes. mean, uh, the, we're edging closer. I know. Closer, so, yeah. cause on our last podcast, you were said, Oh, it's imminent. And so it's still imminent. We're hoping that in the next 60 days, we're going to, we're going to hear the, uh, the Ron Butler, uh, cranky old man podcast or whatever, whatever it's going to be titled. So, okay. Angry mortgage, angry yes. mortgage, angry mortgage. Angry yeah, mortgage. Angry. Yep. I was going to register that domain name, but I forgot to, I um, got there first. I know you beat me to it. So, um, so that's good. We're all looking forward to that. Okay. So let's go back to the bad news theme here. Cause I, uh, and I'll see if we can put this up on the screen for the viewer. You can't see it, but um, the Bank of Canada produces this thing called a, a chart that shows the share of all new mortgages with a mortgage DSR, debt service ratio, greater than 25%. So if you look at the chart going back to 2014, it sort of fluctuated between, I don't know, 10 and 14, 15%. Um, in 2020, it was down to like 11%. And then in the second quarter, I guess, no, the third quarter of 2022, which is the most recent information we have, it spiked all the way up to like 27%. It's a, a massive, so what, what I interpret from that is there's a massive number of people who have way more mortgage debt and debt service than they've had in the past, and they are highly vulnerable. Do you agree with what that chart shows? I agree. Uh, we, I think you have, to, you have to go a little granular on it. Uh, first of all, you have to start with the key consideration that in a couple of major cities in Canada and their outlying areas, the price of houses is batshit crazy. I mean, that's that's just the starting point. I mean, it, 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 it grew to a point where it was absolutely insane through Q3 and Q4 2021 and Q1 2022, where House prices were going up at, at the rate in some locations, in some regions, of 3% a month. Now, 3% a month is just That's ridiculous. Crazy. I mean, it, it just is not even conceivable, and yet it happened. So we've had a retrenchment. We've had a retracing back uh, in those regions. And you, But those regions are typically in the lower mainland. It's like the Fraser Valley uh, in uh, Ontario. It's the outlying communities, like the far northern parts of Brampton, far northern parts of Durham region, or far eastern, far western. It's the edges of the GTA. And they, in a situation where in uh, the little town of Guelph, little town of Guelph, I hate to pick on Guelph, but I just got to talk about it. A 55-year-old bungalow went from a sale price of 510 to a sale price of 940 in the course of less than 22 months. Now, that is just nuts. And of course, they owe eyes have retraced, but you have people who bought at those very high points and had to take on big mortgage debt to accomplish it. And now that the values have retraced, it doesn't look as good. Now that the rates are way up, it doesn't look as good. And finally, a point we hadn't hit on, fixed rates are up, they're way up. 
Um, a year ago, you could find a fixed rate. A year, 14 months ago, you find a fixed rate for 2.39, five-year fixed. Um, that's gone. And those rates all look like numbers in the fours. So when people who took out mortgages five years ago in 2018, where mortgage rates were about 299, 349, maybe 369, I mean, they're all reach, they're all getting a jump up to in the fours, in the fives, some of them in the low and mid fives. And that's another assault on the Canadian consumer. I mean, you get that letter in the mail, hey, you used to have 329 and we're going to give you our best offer, 584. Fantastic. Good news, right? Uh, no, not good news. And that is continuing to pinch consumers when they see that fixed rate. We tend to think people who got fixed rates are fine, but if they got the fixed rates five years ago, they're not going to be so fine this year. Yeah, if you locked in for two or three years, two or three years ago, you got a problem. And yeah. so what am I supposed to do if I am that guy who you just described, who perhaps bought near the peak of the market and my, you know, I, I locked in for one year or two years and now it's it's rolling over or five years ago and now it's it's rolling over again. Um, I'm I'm faced with what could be a doubling of my monthly mortgage payment. Or certainly a fifty percent. I mean, that's more like more like a forty-five percent increase. Okay, so forty-five, which is still a big number. I mean, big that's number. like going from two thousand bucks a month to almost three thousand bucks a month. Correct. Yeah. So I I can't afford an extra thousand dollars a month. My pay didn't go up by a thousand dollars a month after tax, and all my other expenses have gone up. Groceries are higher. Everything else is higher. What am I supposed to do? Well, the, that's why the people who are screaming the loudest are the people who are in variable rates that increased because they've had that experience over the course of the year of, of just one year. Now, the good news for the people who had the lower rate five years ago and now confronting a much higher rate, the good news is there's a chance they could have gotten promotions at their job, could have got a better job, and they've seen some wage increase. Uh, they have a better chance to make this work. Um, let's, but let's look at the people who are in the most trouble right now. We have a, a small group of people, a small group of, of homeowners in uh, Ontario and British Columbia who are faced with a truly troublesome problem. We have a group of people who took out private mortgages. They, they decided that the bank couldn't help them and they still wanted a house or they, they absolutely felt they needed to refinance or for a whole plethora of reasons. They decided they would go outside the banking system, outside the credit union system, and go to private lenders and pay a fairly significantly higher rate. If rates were being offered, fixed rates were being offered at around 2%, they ended up having to pay like 5 or 6%. So that's a lot, but it's not an unmanageable amount, 5%, because we're seeing people paying it today. So these people took on these private mortgages, and for a variety of reasons, a number of these private mortgage organizations or individuals, because they just might have been an individual who lent them the money, um, they just want the money back. Like it's not even a, a rate increase. It's, hey, we need 200 grand back. We need it back. Like I'm giving you 30 days to pay me back. So, wow, that's way different than having to pay more. That's having to find 200 grand. In an environment where all rates are much higher, and where private lenders are actually pulling back and many of them are lending at lower loan to value and, and maybe even your house price went down and nobody's willing to lend you the money. So that group of people are entering into a true area of crisis. And quite frankly, that's where we're seeing all the growth in people being foreclosed out of their homes. It's called power of sale in Ontario. It's called bank owned sale in British Columbia. But it's, uh, it's people who are just having to get a letter from a lawyer, say, we're going to throw you out and you, know, you better leave or you better sell. Or you better do something. We want our money back. We're going to grab your house and sell it for ourselves. Um, and, and that, unfortunately, is a growing category. It, it's a small group. It's a small group of people. But tragically, it's a growing category in Ontario and British Columbia. Yeah. If I had my mortgage with the big bank and it comes up for renewal, they're not going to ask me to pay it back because they're never, in the business no, of doing never, mortgages. Never. What they are going to do is, is raise my rate. And so it's like, okay, I got a bit of trouble now because my I got to come up with an extra thousand bucks a month. But okay, maybe I can rent out the basement. Maybe I can, you know, get a second job, whatever. But if I had a mortgage with a private lender, which I guess is 
you know, pretty much anybody who isn't a big bank. I mean, it, and it could be a group of guys who put some bucks in and said, hey, let's let's do mortgages, yeah, right? Absolutely right. And I mean, I guess if I had a few million bucks, I could come to you, Ron, and say, hey, Ron, I got a few million bucks. Can you find some people who want to lend we'll it? And, find some people who want it for and, you. And yeah. you. You'd be doing it. And so then I, I do all these one-year mortgages and the one year is up and now I decide, yeah. Or six months. Or, or six, six months. months Wow, yeah. I didn't know you could go that short. So so now I don't want to be in the mortgage business anymore because now I can take my money and I can put it in a guaranteed investment certificate at the bank and earn 4%. Why would I be right. taking all the risk on the mortgage? So it's like, no, I'm not renewing your mortgage. Uh, you got to pay me back. And because your mortgage is up at the, uh, you know, March 31st, 2023, what? I, I, you know, on April 1st, I better have my money or else I can kick you out. Is that how it works? You better have the money or we're gonna start the process of taking your home away from you and selling it ourselves. And how long does that process take? Typically five to 12 months. So it's not quick, it's not gonna to be tomorrow. Not quick, no. But, but I've now got a problem because I, you know, I, I don't have a place to live or am not gonna have a place to live. So coming up with an extra thousand dollars a month is a problem, but as you say, coming up with a few hundred thousand dollars, that's a, that's a massive problem. That's a tragedy. Yeah, that's a tragedy. It can be a tragedy. There's no question. And if so, that, that brings us to another subcategory, a subcategory of people who have institutional mortgages, like their, their banks or trusts or, or something, or even credit unions. But those organizations specialized in people that the big banks wouldn't take on. Now, that might be something to do with um, difficulty proving income. Uh, people are self employed. People might be new to Canada. Uh, people with damaged credit, something you're familiar mm -hmm, with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> people who have some problems paying bills, and and yet they still could get a mortgage from these companies. Uh, these companies' rates, we're talking about rates going up 50%. We have seen some of these rates go up 125%. It's like the HELOCs. They've gone through the roof. People who had 3.19 one-year mortgages, because they're almost all one-year mortgages, uh, are in getting renewal rates in the eights, like wow. 809, 819. I mean, this is like an, uh, uh, that's a 65% increase in payment. Uh, and these people find it very hard to manage. So that's another group that are feeling an enormous amount of stress. Uh, those institutions who offer those types of mortgages, they're less likely to be able to work with their clients. In other words, you could get some, there's something that banks can do for you called extended amortization. So if you're in trouble, you're a hardship case, you, you've got that big jump in variable rate or you've got a big renewal jump and you go to your banker and say, you know what, I, I have no way of paying this. I mean, I can prove it to you. I can show you my bills. I can show you my paycheck. I mean, you know, what can we do? Well, for some financial institutions, they can say, well, okay, you're down to 22 years amortization. We'll take you back up to 30 years amortization. In some cases, they can go to 35 and 40 year amortization, not in all cases, but some. And this will allow you, by the way, you, you'll hardly pay off a dime of your mortgage during this time because 40 year amortization is almost the same as interest only, but you will be able to reduce your payment so you could probably get by. So that's a positive of dealing with some of the big banks or, or having more traditional scenarios. But for people who have been in alternative lending, they might be able to get some relief, but they can't get the same amount of relief. And again, for those people in the private mortgages, zero relief. They want their money back. So we've got a category of people today who are exposed to mortgage problems that quite frankly, for the last, I don't know, since 2008, uh, people have not been exposed to. It's as simple as that. And so if I'm one of those people in that category, you've already given us the practical advice. Okay, talk to your lender and say, hey, can you stretch my amortization out? I mean, I paid for five years. I'm down to a 20-year AM. Maybe you can jack it up to 30 or even 40 years. That'll I'm just going to be paying interest forever, but at least my monthly payment won't go through the roof. Would that also be a circumstance where someone should be reaching out to you know, one of your professionals? Or is it like, nope, sorry, here at Butler Mortgage, we can't help you if you've already got an underwater mortgage somewhere else? Definitely reach out. Reach out first to your own lender because they're the most familiar with your situation. Uh, they are the ones who've got the mortgage on the books. Reach out to mortgage professionals like Butler Mortgage. Seek out advice. The one thing don't do is don't pretend it isn't happening. I mean, it's exactly the same as your business, Doug. The people who tend to come to you with the worst problems are people that you shake your head and say, you should have come and seen me a year ago or six months ago, or, you know, we could have been of help. We could have been more helpful then. 
Um, so that's that's my main advice is just seek help. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. You're not the cause of uh, mortgage rates going up by uh, 50% or 100%. You're not the cause of it. So there's no shame in it. Just come to seek out the best possible advice. Look for a solution. That's what you should do. And that, I think, is good advice for pretty much everything. If you got a health problem, probably the sooner you deal with it, the better, rather than waiting. How early should someone be reaching out to you in advance of when their mortgage comes up for renewal? If it's coming up for renewal tomorrow, you should have called me earlier. If it's coming up in six months, is that too early to be talking to you? The ideal time frame is four months. Four months. That's the ideal time frame, yes. Okay. So my mortgage is coming up for renewal in four months. Four months, start talking to you now. You can start looking at, at different options, figuring out what can be done. And that gives time because obviously there's stuff that has to happen, paperwork and, and so on. So, okay. Well, that's fantastic. I got 72 other questions, but we'll have to, um, I'll send these into your your podcast and you can answer them on your podcast so that I, I know because we there's a whole bunch of stuff we haven't touched on yet. But, but this is good. I think we got some very practical advice here. Number one, Uh, At the moment, you kind of have to be crazy to be going variable because you're paying way more to take on way more risk, which just doesn't make sense. And if you are seeing problems, your your mortgage is renewing at a much higher rate or you think it's going to, there are perhaps things that can be done, but the sooner you reach out and and jump on those, uh, the better. Are there any final comments or pieces of advice or topics or anything you would like to leave the listener with today? Sure. Uh, You're eventually going to start to hear, uh, people are going to start to hear that, oh, uh, the real estate market is healing. Um, There's a a little blip of an increase of people's interest in buying. There's a, in the last three weeks, there's been a return to multiple offers in a few situations. Whatever you do, whatever you do, don't believe that the world has changed. Oh, I better rush out and buy a house. This is my last chance. Or uh, the prices have hit rock bottom, and I need to run out and buy a house now. Look, in every chart, there's in every single chart, there are no straight lines. There are blips. There are bumps. There are uh, valleys and, and peaks. So the market was constrained. The real estate market was constrained for months. And now that some rates have come under 5%, because we spent the whole of almost half of Last year, uh, with almost all the rates in the 5% range, we finally got some rates in the 4% range. So there's a little bit of a bump in activity. Don't think that this means that house prices are going to go to the moon again. You can't have moonshot house prices with 4% mortgage rates. So if you start to hear that narrative, stay calm, carry on, and don't feel this is your last chance to buy a house there's a greater chance that prices will grind down over the next six months than they will take a huge leap. So when you hear those things, be conservative, think twice and stay calm. Yeah. And I think you got to, that's excellent advice. And I think you got to also understand why am I buying this house? If it's so my family can live in it for the next 20 years. Okay. Then I guess you can potentially take a little bit more uh, risk. If you're a house flipper, Okay, well then to expect that you're going to be able to buy the house today and, and sell it in three months, that is just absolutely crazy. That just makes crazy. makes Completely no sense crazy. at all. So, okay, well that is that is fantastic advice. Uh, Ron, thank you very much for being here. Uh, so I'll put this all up on the screen for people who are watching the video and I assume everyone's watching it. So hit all those like buttons and everything while you're while I'm saying all this stuff. Uh, Ron Butler is Ron Mortgage Guy on Twitter. And uh, you've got some epic stuff on there. So I have to stay back because I don't want to get into the same level of of trouble as as you get into. Um, And butlermortgage.ca is where you can find all the stuff we've talked about. You've got a, a really good... Um, calculator there. So I can type in, okay, so if if I buy a house for a million and I got a 20% down payment, here's all the different mortgage rates. What would it all be? Boom. It takes like four seconds and you got an answer. So that is an excellent resource for uh, people to use. So Ron, thanks very much for being here today. Doug, loved it. Thanks for having me again. Fantastic. That was Ron Butler, Ron the Mortgage Guy. And that was, of course, Debt Free in 30. Thank you for watching and listening. We have a new show every Saturday morning, so please like and subscribe on audio and YouTube. Until then, until next week, I'm Doug Hoyes. That was Debt Free in 30.